Well, hello and welcome to uh, this panel, first panel of Sunday. Hope you're all enjoying SPX. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, ostensibly Latinx representation in comics, but kind of around the narrative of a book called Vosis and Fronteras. I'm going to talk about that book a little bit in a second and introduce the, introduce the panelists, but first I want to um, call to your attention some of the people who are here that uh, helped put this book together. Uh, first, we have Kathy Crutcher from Shout Mouse Press. She's going to just say a quick thing about the publishing company. Kathy, if you want to come up. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. My name is Kathy. I am the founder of an organization. Called, we are a nonprofit called Shout Mouse Press. We are a writing program and a publishing house for unheard voices. What that means is that we help folks who don't normally get a chance to become authors to tell their stories in their own voices, on their own terms, publish them in professional quality books. We always partner with another nonprofit that is serving a community in need. In this case, our partner was the amazing Latin American Youth Center, LAYC. And I know you're going to learn a little bit more about them shortly. Um, but I just wanted to put this project in context of a larger body of work that this is uh, our 30th book right now by uh, Unheard Voices. There are some catalogs up here if you're interested in learning about others of our projects, working with other communities, um, which include incarcerated youth, at-risk teens. We're working on a Muslim American youth book right now, um, et cetera. So thank you again for being here. I'm so honored and proud of these young people who are part of this project, and uh, you are um, in for a, a moving experience learning from them today. Thanks. Another organization, uh, as Kathy mentioned, was the Latin American Youth Center, particularly the um, Latin Youth Leadership Council. So I'm going to have uh, Juan Pacheco come up and say a little bit about them. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Juan Pacheco, and I'm here with the Latin American Youth Center. Uh, it's always so exciting to uh, talk about youth voices. And what gets me a little bit even more rallied up is when we talk about youth choice and youth power. And so one of the unique things about this uh, thing that emerged by a uh, young person's idea to start a group um, for leadership in their own community was uh, something that got started by one of the co-founders is actually here with us, right? Her name is uh, Daisy. Her friend Santos um, um, helped uh, build the Latino Youth Leadership Council because they saw a need of uh, recently arrived youth in our city to have a hub where they can have choices over their education, their housing, their future scholarships. And so, you know, one day they just called me up and they said, you know, Juan, we met you at this conference. And you told us if young people wanted to change the world, that all we needed to do was demand and ask. So they demanded and asked me to help them. <laughs> and I knew what that meant. I mean, work a lot more, right? <laughs> but you know, that's what we adults have to do. We have to be able to meet young people. And when they say that they have a dream, a vision, when they have something in their heart that they want to build, we got to be there for them. And so this, uh, this um, group was not something that the Latin American Youth Center invented or it, it, you know, it started from a grant, it actually started by young people. And so uh, it's always uh, powerful when we listen to them and we give them the support infrastructure so they can dream big and big. And so, you know, you're going to get to learn a little bit more about this book. And so, um, you know, just have that in the, in the heart center of your mind that, you know, amazing things can happen when you support youth, whether it's your children or the young people you work with, or maybe it's a stranger, right? Even in this conference, there's so many uh, divine lights that are being sparked up by, you know, the, the wonderful world of comics with the young people that we're getting to meet every day. So um, it, I'm just here to serve. I'm here to serve you, you guys, to whenever you want. And so that's our job. It's our duty. And so. The Latin American Youth Center is committed to doing that so you guys want to go as far as you want to go with this project. Thank you. And thank you, Juan. So, um, so a little bit about this book before I introduce the, the panelists today. Um, this 
started uh, last summer. Uh, you know, there was some groundwork before that, but last summer the Latin American Youth Center was very generous. Uh, they invited uh, me, Shout Mouse Press, three other comics artists, two of which are here today, into their home. Literally, they gave us a brownstone to use for about a month. Uh, we papered the walls with paper everywhere, uh, markers everywhere, places to draw everywhere, every surface was drawable. And we spent a month learning how to make comics, basically. Um, so we, we mentored these kids, these youth. Um, we, uh, we helped them, Shout Mouse helped them kind of you know, elicit their stories from them. And we spent the month making their, their sort of memoirs in comics form and you know, published it earlier this year. So uh, it was a great project. We liked it a lot. But I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the panelists. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask them to talk a little bit about themselves. So uh, first up, we have uh, Selena, who is uh, one of the cartoonists in the book. Selena, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself, your project, or whatever? <laughs> Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, yo les quiero agradecer to, uh, a cada uno de los que están acá hoy presente. Uh, mi nombre es Elena. Um, yo soy de Guerrero, México. Y, um, y ahorita estoy en la universidad, mi segundo año. Y uh, mi, mi carrera es uh, trabajadora social. Hi, my name is Elena. Uh, I want to thank every one of you to be, for being here. Um, I am from Guerrero, Mexico, and uh, now I'm in the second year of university studying social studies. Um, Do you want to tell us a little bit about your story? Oh. You can start there. Uh, bueno, la historia que yo uh, escribí se basa en sobre uh, las esperanzas nunca mueren. Uh, the story that I wrote and drew was the theme about it was that hope never dies. Yo decidí escribir esta parte de, uh, de mi historia porque se relaciona con mi, uh, mi abuelita, que para mí ella fue mi mamá. I wanted to tell this part of my life because um, it focused on my grandmother, who was for me like my mother. Uh, yo decidí escribir sobre ella porque um, ella falleció en el 2005 y para mí ella fue um, básicamente un ángel para mí uh, y quise darle honor a ella porque gracias a ella uh, yo estoy donde estoy ahora. Um, I wanted to write about her because for me she was an angel. Um, she passed away in 2005, but I would not be here if it wasn't for her. Y, um, Básicamente mi historia es sobre um, cómo uh, mi abuelita me cuidó después de que mis papás uh, vinieron acá a los Estados Unidos y yo tuve que quedarme con ella porque era la única persona en la que yo confiaba y realmente yo amaba. Um, I wanted to write about this as well because when my parents left Mexico to be here in the United States, my grandmother was the one who took care of me and uh, Everything that I am, it's because of her. Y, um, y también quise hablar sobre esta parte de historia porque tal vez muchos jóvenes como yo, um, cuando sus padres uh, los dejan en, en sus países, uh, es la única que, con la única persona que se quedan es con sus abuelas uh, y, y siento que nuestras abuelas es... Um, Es una parte de lo que somos y, uh, y del agradecimiento que a veces uh, nosotros no les damos y por eso yo quise decir, de, de, a escribir esta historia porque uh, tal vez muchos jóvenes uh, como yo, uh, jóvenes latinos o otros jóvenes se identifican con mi historia y pueden darle honor a sus abuelas y... Um, Aunque no están acá, tal vez, o han fallecido, pero es uh, un honor darles a nuestras abuelas. I also wanted to write about my grandmother so that other Latino youth whose parents left their countries and they stayed behind with their grandmothers or grandparents, that they could identify with this story because it's more of a universal story. and. Uh, she really wants to honor 
the grandparents of every single kid that has stayed behind because they're lifesavers. Uh, también en mi historia incluí a mi hermanita, uh, mi, mi hermanita que nació acá en los Estados Unidos. Y yo la incluí a ella porque um, yo quiero ser una protectora para ella como mi abuelita lo fue para mí. I also wanted to include my little sister in my story because I wanted to become a protector of my little sister the same way that my grandmother was a protector of mine. Y también por eso es que... Um, y básicamente incluí a mi hermanita porque um, ella tiene la oportunidad de crecer con mis padres y es algo que muchos jóvenes o, uh, como yo que no crecen con sus padres y, y yo decidí incluirla a ella porque ella para mí representa uh, las mejores oportunidades uh, para ella de que pueda crecer con mis padres y pueda tener más oportunidades de uh, estudiar o o tener becas y es algo que yo no pude obtener uh, y siento que para ella ella puede uh, quiero ser un ejemplo para ella básicamente de que uh, a pesar de los obstáculos a pesar de las pérdidas um, podemos seguir adelante I also wanted to include my sister because she represents the hope that um, people like me did not have um, She has a lot of opportunities because she was born in the United States, and uh, she's able to get grants, she's able to get scholarships, things that I were not able to get as an immigrant. And, um, oh, yeah. sorry. That's basically it, sorry. Y bueno, muchísimas gracias en serio por estar acá y y nuestra uh, y quiero seguir motivando a más jóvenes a, a que tal vez escriban libros y, y ustedes como adultos apoyarlos porque um, básicamente nosotros queremos uh, mejorar en nuestras comunidades y apoyar a, 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 a más jóvenes um, eso es todo um, thank you so much for being here for supporting us and uh, us as youth, we really want our voices to be heard, and so we also need adults to hear our voices. And so we're really thankful for you to be here and to continue supporting people like us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Selena. <laughs> also on our panel today, we have another one of our youth cartoonists, Alejandro. Alejandro, you want to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Alejandro López. Eh, soy de La Paz, El Salvador. Estoy estudiando gestión de negocios en la universidad. Actualmente es mi primer año y les voy a hablar un poco sobre mi historia en el libro. Hi, my name is Alejandro López. I'm originally from La Paz, in El Salvador, and uh, right now I'm a freshman in business school. Now I'm going to tell a little bit about my story. Pues mi historia básicamente habla sobre cómo yo me superé con la llegada a este país. My story is about how, how I was able to improve myself once I got into this country. Uno de los principales factores en la llegada a este país fue el lenguaje que me costó un poco, bueno, me está costando aprenderlo y uh, ser fluyente en, en esa parte. One of the biggest obstacles that I've had since coming to this country is the language barrier that I have, and uh, I'm still learning English, so. Otro fue que mi historia habla sobre la manera en la que yo pensaba en mi país cambió cuando yo vine a ese país. Fue totalmente diferente, me cambió la manera de ver de distintos puntos de vista las situaciones y eso fue verdaderamente que me gusta ahora porque 
tengo la capacidad de ver de distintos puntos de vista las situaciones. Something that I wanted to tell within my story as well was that once I came to the United States, I was able to look back at life in El Salvador and see it from a different point of view. So he really likes that now he can have different perspectives on life both here and in El Salvador. También en, en la historia trata sobre a quién va dedicado mi historia es a mis padres y todo el sacrificio que ellos hicieron para traerme a este país y le dedico mi historia a mis padres y a mi familia también porque es como devolverles lo que ellos hicieron por mí y es que es prácticamente eso. I wanted to dedicate my story uh, to my parents because of all of the struggles that they had to go through so that I could come here. Y lo que yo trato de dar en ese libro es una historia de superación y también dar a demostrar a muchos jóvenes que ellos se den como que la historia pueda también ayudarles a superarse también y también que así como yo pude ellos también pueden hacerlo something that i wanted to do with my story was to help other young people to know that you can overcome obstacles that you can become better and be an example so that more people can feel that they can also do it en conclusión eh, mi historia es sobre superación y cómo alcanzar metas de que pueden ser propuestas y lograrlas. So my story is about how you can reach your goals if you set if you set goals how you can reach them and how you can overcome every obstacle to get there. Muchas gracias por su atención. Y espero disfruten el libro. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the book. Thank you, Thank you so much. So uh, I also want to say who these other people are. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll introduce ourselves quickly. I know you're here mainly for the youth, so we'll, we'll do it in the context of this book, I guess, and in our intersection with it, right? So um, uh, I've known Kathy for a while. Uh, she said she wanted to do a comic with the Latin American uh, Youth Center, so uh, we kind of teamed up to do this. I, I brought some other people on board. Uh, my name is Jason Rodriguez. I've been editing uh, comics and graphic novels, particularly anthologies, for about 15 years or so at this point. Um, started shifting mostly to social justice and history-related comics about nine years ago, and this was by far the most meaningful project I've ever worked on. I don't think I've ever cried in front of a room of teenagers so much as I did with this project. <laughs> Santi? Um, hi. I'm Santi Casares. Um, I'm a cartoonist. I do basically comics for kids. And um, I was lucky to be involved in this project. Um, well, they brought me in part because I know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and also because um, it was something that was important to me. I'm also an immigrant. Even though I came here in a different way, I had it a lot easier than these kids. Like, you have no idea. Their stories are. They, they, they show how they deserve to be in this country. Um, and um, I'm really proud of having worked in this book and uh, to have worked with these young people. Hi, I'm uh, Evan Keeling. I, uh, I do exhibit production and comic book works at uh, the Smithsonian. Um, I also do a lot of workshops through comics at the Smithsonian, and that was also how I got attached to Jason um, for this, uh, or, well, you know, or Jason attached me to this project. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I was really, I really enjoyed doing it because it was, it was. I have a, a big proponent of the idea that anybody can draw a comic and anybody can make a comic about themselves, and that's what important. What's important is telling that story, and I really enjoyed working with these youth and hearing their powerful stories, and helping them 
sort of find a way to present their powerful stories in their own hand and in their own voice. And it was wonderful. And I also want to really thank them for all being so patient with me since I don't know a lick of Spanish. <laughs> so. uh, the, the fourth teacher who helped us, uh, uh, mentor who helped us, was uh, Liz Larrabee. So after this, if you go up the table W45, you can meet her because she decided to stay behind and work the table, uh, which she didn't have to, but she did. So that's good. <laughs> so. Um, Onto the book a little bit and the, the way we made this book. Uh, this slide, it's a little washed out, but uh, when we first got together, uh, Kathy uh, stood up in front of this large group of people and she put this first piece of paper on the wall, first of many, and she asked the youth to come up with the, the mission, the audience, and what was it? Uh, and the messages that they want from this book. So, so right from the start, it was you know, a youth focused and centric kind of project they were going to drive it. And, you know, for me, I was, I was pretty, you know, impressed by just what was going up there. You know, they wanted to inspire, motivate, and educate. But a lot of the messages up there was, was really, you know, it was aimed towards, you know, younger people who might be going through same experiences, as well as older people who might be in charge of policy or who might perhaps need a different perspective. So um, I want to just go to the panel and ask uh, what, did you all, what did the Latin American Youth Center, the Latin Youth Leadership Center, want people to get out of this book when they read it? Like, what messages did you want to put across? Do you want to translate that, Santi? Um, Bueno, uno de los mensajes era básicamente uh, inspirar y motivar a, a, a otros jóvenes y a personas adultas sobre a uh, cambiarle las mentes sobre los jóvenes um, indocumentados que uh, porque hay muchos estereotipos honestamente que se hablan de los jóvenes no solamente indocumentados sino que en general um, one of the messages that we wanted to uh, give with this book, uh, with this project, was first to inspire other youth like us and also to let adults to know about our stories, about youth, about how not all undocumented immigrants are evil and uh, even not all youth is evil. Like, to see our point of view. Y básicamente también educar a las personas sobre uh, nuestros, porque básicamente todos los, nosotros como jóvenes tenemos bastantes obstáculos o pérdidas y quisimos darle a uh, ese mensaje de que uh, de quién realmente somos, de cuáles son realmente nuestras historias, nuestros sueños y nuestros obstáculos o metas que tenemos. We also wanted to tell people that of all of the obstacles and hardships that we went through that they inform our stories that um oh, I got lost. Sorry. That's why I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bueno, nuestro mensaje principalmente era inspirar, educar y motivar. Our main message was to try to inspire, motivate and educate and educate people about our stories. Y también era eliminar estereotipos que tenía las personas sobre jóvenes provenientes de Latinoamérica. And also we wanted to eliminate the stereotypes that people have about the youth that comes from Latin America. Eh, también darles muchas historias a personas que tenían una mentalidad diferente para hacerles entender que los jóvenes también pueden cambiar el mundo. We also wanted to show with different stories to show them that the youth can also change the world. Y 
Okay, so and that's it, basically. Thank you. I'm not gonna have the instructors answer this question. I do wanna put this up, though. Um, so this was a comic that uh, Santiago made about making comics to help the students kind of in the, the learning process. And uh, Santi and Evan, is there any particular tools that you use in a project like this to kind of, you know, help? We did a, a month worth of, of projects. Any lessons learned, anything like that that you want to talk about? Well, um, when we started um, the project, a lot of the youth, basically, they said, we cannot draw anything. All we can do is stick figures. And so I created a, a little thing that I've expanded afterwards, but just to give them more tools for them to tell their own stories, because that's what was important for us, for them to be able to tell their stories in their own way. So it was not like a manual that you have to do this. It's just like, here's a toolbox so you can have more tools to tell your own stories. Did you guys use, you guys, did you guys like this comic? Did you use it at all? Yes, I do, because <laughs> I don't know how to draw, so uh, for me this uh, was um, was a easy tool like to use it and draw um, some emotion that I want to put in my comic book, and uh, also uh, how to draw people like uh, and so I really like it, and I still have in my home when I want to write it something or draw something. I just look at it and some emotions, so I really like it. Do you want to? Yeah, good. Pues fue muy útil ese libro, esta herramienta, porque no sabía cómo dibujar. This booklet was really helpful for me because I did not know how to draw. Me dio muchísimo porque tenía muchas ideas y no sabía cómo ponerlas en un dibujo. It helped me a lot because I had a, a ton of ideas, but I did not know how to put them down in paper. Y le agradezco mucho a San, Santi, 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 porque, porque ese, eso fue muy útil para nosotros uh, descubrirnos nuestras ideas en dibujos. And that it, he's thanking me because it really helped them <laughs> out to be able to express their ideas in drawing form. Evan, anything you want to talk about learning wise? Well, the, 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 the learning is funny. It's talking about this in the book being helpful is the idea of comics being iconography and consistency and working with that. Um, and it was really powerful working, especially with you know youth who didn't feel that they could draw and finding that with these little bits of steps that they could, that they, they were able to do it. They were able to create um, something beautiful of their own hand and telling it themselves. And, for some, and they even started doing things on their own, like getting, to give you an example, there's a story where one of them decided to draw herself all black because she had lost all hope and she was and it's like, can I do that? And we were like, yes, that's amazing. That, and that's what comics are, that you can use visual language to tell more than the, just the words. So that was, that was pretty cool how they even surprised us in the way that they were taking their comics. When I, I saw that with the book, like, and it didn't end up, like, you can have a worry with a book like the book Santiago created that everybody will start drawing exactly like Santiago for the book and nobody <laughs> did. Like, if you look at the book, it's, it's a, broad, like a broad variety of artistic styles and techniques and approaches to the stories. And it was, it was just really inspiring watching them all grow as artists as well. So I, I think Santi had a, a good point about um, uh, sort of like as we went through those, those X weeks, uh, watching the youth as they sort of realize that you could uh, tell like a bigger story with comics, right? Because a picture itself is worth a thousand words, so if you're drawing a picture, you're writing a thousand words, essentially. Um, Selena and Alejandro, do any of you have any thoughts on why, like at the end of the day, uh, why maybe comics was a good uh, format for your stories? Pienso que el formato de cómics fue muy importante para jóvenes porque... I think that the format 
um, doing it in comics, it was very important because la manera en que los libros están ahora, si tienen muchas letras, algunos jóvenes no les llama mucho la atención porque lo, se sienten como aburridos. Uh, because uh, right now a lot of youth, if they see a book with a lot, of, a lot of words, they will not even crack them open because they think that they're going to be boring. Y si tienen como más dibujos o cosas animadas, pueden ser como más interesante de leer. And that if they have illustrations, it might be more interesting for them to read. Eh, por eso fue la razón que lo hicimos en cómics. That was the reason we wanted to do it in comics. Uh, well, for me, like to uh, to use this format of writing in comics book is because through the drawing you can see the emotions, you can see what uh, uh, the people are doing or feeling, and also I think it's something powerful, not just for adults but also for children, like to understand. Um, Like, uh, like they can relate it uh, to uh, to comics, and also as Alejandro say, uh, most of the people don't like to like to read, like or see only words, but also they want to see like uh, um, um, trying uh, in. No, so we. Uh, Well, our book is not just for adults, but also for kids. Like they can give idea, like how maybe if they want to to draw something, or uh, this an, this is an example, like they can do it too. Uh, yeah, that, that was everything I want to say. Thank you. Uh, there's some photos that we have from the workshops. Uh, did anyone do our workshop yesterday, by any chance? I don't see it. Oh, right there. Hey. <laughs> uh, we did this actual exercise in the workshop yesterday. Uh, this was one of the, I think this was the first thing we did as a group. Um, we had everyone draw their map of sort of how they got to the room at that moment, basically, right? So from childhood to that moment. Um, and kind of step through. So, so, you know, the instructors went up first. You can actually see mine right there. It's New York to Boston to DC. Santi did his from Mexico to San Francisco. And all the kids got up and each did theirs. And it was really a great way, I think, to just kind of get over this feeling that, you know, I, don't, I can't draw, which is, again, something we, we face a lot by just having people up there and say, well, you can draw, you know. It just depends on what you're drawing and, and how you do it. So, so we kind of did that. Uh, there was another one where you can see here. We, uh, put papers all over the walls and we had people come up and draw different emotions to kind of show, um, you know, how to do like simple icon iconography. Um, and we did all this in, it was Casa de Sol, right? Casa de Sol. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and the, the kids did a lot more there besides that. Uh, do you, this is kind of a very broad question, but uh, do you guys have any particularly fond memories of any of the exercises we might have done? or your experience even outside the comics? You want to talk at all about some of the stuff you guys did over the summer with the, the leadership program or anything with making the comics or anything like that? Bueno, para mí algo divertido que yo recuerdo es cuando empezamos a dibujar las emociones con caritas ahí. Y... Uh, something that I remember that was really fun was when we started drawing the expressions with faces over there. Y um, básicamente eso fue divertido porque uh, cada joven uh, Voy a decir hermanos porque uh, aunque somos de diferentes países uh, creamos una familia ahí en Casa Sol y um, básicamente uh, cada uno pasaba a, a dibujar una expresión o una emoción a través de las caras. Um, 
It was when every one of the youth, but um, I want to call them siblings because we were more, even though we were from different families, we became our own family there. When each one of us would come up and draw in their own style the expressions on the wall. Y uh, también algo que uh, me gustó es sobre cuando pasamos a, a, a dibujar algo que desde niños queríamos hacer, ¿no? como un Superman o, o una sirena o, o un superhéroe. Something that I really enjoyed also was when we were coming up in front of every one of the family to draw what we wanted to be when we were kids, even if it was something like Superman or being a mermaid or something like that. Y yo lo que dibujé me acuerdo fue um, que quería ser una mariposa de, de niña, así que, um, y ese sueño aún lo tengo porque um, me gustaría volar lejos, um, aunque no tenga yo alas, pero uh, ir lejos y um, hacer muchas cosas positivas. I still remember what I drew when I went up in front of everybody and I drew myself that I wanted to be a butterfly and that's a dream that I still have because I want to be able to fly away and do positive things. Y también algo que um, que me gustó fue que uh, básicamente convivimos como familia. Um, nos podíamos comunicar uno al otro. Um, cocinábamos juntos, um, limpiábamos juntos y básicamente para mí ellos son una familia, estos jóvenes uh, y que puedo contar con ellos en las buenas y en las malas. Something that I also remember that is really nice that we were actually like a family, we would cook together, we would clean together and we had our bags in the good times and the bad times and this will happen from that moment onward. Algo que fue muy, como una vibra tan positiva fue como hicimos, nos enseñaron y e hicimos los dibujos de una manera, manera tan simple que se siente bien positivo la, la energía de los dibujos. Something that I really liked was how we did the drawings that even though they're very simple, they have a very positive energy with them. Son dibujos que marcan a las personas y también algo divertido fue que algunos, bueno, yo no podía dibujar y que me daba risa como hacía dibujos de palitos <risa> y que luego fui aprendiendo un poco más pero también llama mucho la atención la convivencia que teníamos a pesar de que no fuéramos de los mismos países something that was very fun for me how it was how I started drawing everything with stick figures and how things started looking better with time and uh, also once again, um, that he thought it was really good that they really became families even though they came from different countries and different places. Y también que hacíamos cosas divertidas como aprend oh, no recuerdo mucho pero sí fue un verano divertido que pasamos en Casa Sol Pacheco y muchos otros jóvenes. That uh, he remembers that it was a very fun summer last year, and that they had a lot of fun together at Casa Sol. That's in Washington D.C. in Columbia Heights. So you guys know. Thank you. I think we probably could squeeze in one question. We ran a little long. Uh, if anyone has one, there's microphones in the back um, behind the aisles. So just get up and ask one if you have any for our, our youth or our instructors or anyone. Oh, yep. Buenas. Um, mi pregunta es, ¿qué fue 
la parte más difícil de crear esas historias y este libro. My question is, what was the most difficult part of creating um, these stories in this book? Voy a decir que fue la manera de plasmar nuestras ideas y nuestras historias en dibujos. I would say that it was the way to put our stories in drawings. <laughs> uh, well, for me, it was uh, the hardest part for me was uh, to to share that part of my story about my grandmother. Um, I still remember that was three, four times I cried, like to to telling that story again and again. And the first time I decided to not uh, to not be part of the comics box, but after that I was thinking like, no, I need to uh, give a honor to my grandmother for all the work she did. And, and the reason why I'm here right now, or I am be the person. And, um, and I think most of the, uh, the youth, um, it's like hard to share that specific story and, and give it to the people uh, to know who we, who we are. And with the hope that um, the people can learn from us and and maybe this, their minds can change. So for me, the, the uh, hard part was to uh, to share that specific uh, part of my life about my grandmother. And if she is not here, but um, she's still my heart. So and um, and that is something I want to be for my little sister, like to uh, be like uh, at the beginning I say a uh, protector. And um, yeah. Thank you. I, Thank you. I don't think we have time for any more questions. We could do one more if anyone has another one. <clears throat> well, I, I can say oh. as, as a mentor what, what I saw what happened with the kids, well, the youth. I, 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 I do it too. We're, we're all over um, 40 over here. So. Was that <laughs> we were trying to push them and that's something that uh, to tell their like very personal stories and that's hard to do. And it's hard for them to open up and um, every single day at the beginning, when we arrived, Juan Pacheco would take the kids together and they would be like doing exercises of getting to know each other so that they would be able to trust each other to be able to share their stories. First, within all of the family, the familia, like they would call themselves, you know, and then to be able to share that stories with us and to be able to share it with all of you as well. Yeah. No, I, I uh, you know, I, I mean, this, I don't know, my own sort of version of that, right? I, I came from a third generation New Yorkian family. And, you know, moving to DC, you kind of miss a lot of that familial structure where you sit around a table and you share stories and Friday nights until the, the late evening. And uh, it, this project brought so much of that back into my life, in a way. Um, and that's kind of why it moved me so much. And hearing these kids, uh, youth, <laughs> who were just so, reminded me so much of my own strong, strong family uh, growing up that I just haven't seen in a while as much as I like to. So um, I think we all worked through a lot of things in this program, for sure. And I, that was certainly, it was something, it was just something else, it was great. It was, it was really wonderful how open and accepting the youth were and Juan and the whole LAYC team were of us coming into it and being willing to share their stories so intimately with us. Um, it was really an honor to, to help them with that and that, that they were willing to trust us with those stories and with that part of themselves. Yeah. Okay, good. What's the plan for the book was the question. Uh, I wish Kathy was here to answer it. It's been out for uh, four or five months now. Um, I believe, Selena, did you, were you, Someone gave a copy to Michelle Obama. Did I see that correctly on social media? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's it. You know, mission accomplished. No. <laughs> no. Um, you guys are doing a bunch of. You guys already done a bunch of programming around it, correct? Yes. Uh, 
Well, right now we are trying to do uh, some workshops, and as uh, Jason said, uh, we gave a book to Michelle Obama. So um, that is part of our mission, like to expand our books, not just in this country, but also in other countries, to um, to see like what uh, the, are the stories of, of young people, uh, Latinos, and, um, and also try to change their minds like about uh, the vision they they have about youth and more specific for Latinos youth. So um, and we trying to inspire all the young people like they can do the same thing uh, and also they can go to to adults like to help them to um, to write their stories because our story is the only thing we can we can have and nobody can take it for us. So and yeah. And something that is important is that this book is bilingual. So it's, um, it's a page in English faced by a page in Spanish. So um, that was made because we wanted to reach as broader audience as we could. And especially since these are Latino stories, they wanted to reach a lot of people that are in their own situation. situation. Yeah. And the book is available um, in local bookstores and online and other bookstores. You can order it through their website. Shout Mouse Press itself is a not-for-profit organization, so all the money goes generally, I shouldn't talk about it, I don't know exactly where it goes, but it goes to not-for-profits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know there's some structure. Um, so uh, yeah, it should be available to get. There's catalogs. We're at table W45, so you can sell, you can come by and, and purchase a copy of the book. Are you guys gonna stick around a little bit to do a little signing, is that possible? Well, so some of the, the youth will be there if they wanna, if you wanna get them to sign your book. Um, and yeah, and at least come by and say hi to Liz because she had to miss out on this and I feel bad for her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for coming very much and, and absolutely thank Alejandro and Selena for their time. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your time.